1979, President Jimmy Carter declared the month of June as a time to highlight, celebrate, and recognize black music. This year happens to be the golden anniversary of the Sound of Philadelphia. Yuki introduces us to the two men whose work is on the soundtrack of so many lives, including his own. If by chance you don't know them, writer producers Kenny Gamble and Leon Huff are the backbone of what's been called for the last five decades the Sound of Philadelphia. Wow, 50 years, you know, and uh, I'm thankful, you know, first of all, for still being here because many of our friends and uh, fellow musicians and whatever, they're gone. That they stay here through the music. We were deep writers, Yuki. We was like in a zone. We was like really deep. In, so, we, what, our songs yeah. were different. They were different. They 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 were like food for hungry for hungry souls. They were at the forefront of an amazing team of musicians and technicians that created songs like "Me and Mrs. Jones," "Expressway to Your Heart," "For the Love of Money," and so many more. There was and is a message in their music. <laughs> You know, it's really hard to explain how the, the, the process of gambling, huh? Because it's, it's something that you would have to see to believe it. We would make them songs so powerful that you couldn't resist them. And that's what's mm -hmm. got to happen is that the young people got to, they got to make songs that's going to last forever. Because theirs certainly have. And it started in the early 60s when these local legends first met in Center City out of high school. They hit all the right notes from day one. Huff used to play the piano when we were writing. That piano used to sound like a full orchestra. He'd end up coming over my house in Camden. So that's where I was born and raised at, because I had the piano. Okay. And, and uh, he came over to my house, and we sat down and wrote five, six songs right off the top of our head. And so many local and national artists wanted to perform those songs. Was there one group or one person that you didn't get back in the day to do some of your songs that to this day you wish you had? One of the ones I think about a lot is that, uh, well, Aretha Franklin. Wow. Uh, okay. I used to talk to her, not a whole lot, but she always used to talk, come on, bring me to Philly and, and whatever. I said, okay, and we tried on a couple of occasions. Also on a few occasions, well, Mr. Gamble told me special guests would sit in on a session or two. People from all walks of life. Some of them were, were members of the Philadelphia Orchestra, retired orchestra players, and they would come over to our studio in the evenings and play play rhythm and blues with us at night and go and play Tchaikovsky and all them people over <laughs> At the Academy of Music. The power of music is incredible, then, now, and always. We was able to write songs like Love Train and uh, Wake Up Everybody, produce that. And I mean, we were, we were social conscious, I put that way, because our antennas was always up. There's so much hatred, war, and poverty. The whole object of, of it was to to write songs that would inspire people to to be uh, to be better human beings. Inspiration to last for generations. Wake up, everybody! Happy 50th anniversary, and thank you. No more back with thinking. Time for thinking ahead. Legacy Records, the catalog music or division of Sony Music Entertainment, has released two new vinyl compilations celebrating the 50th anniversary of Philadelphia International Records.